If a node fails within a star network topology, how does it affect the remainder of the network? Which fire suppression system among the following utilizes a gas as the extinguishing agent? Welcome to Certification Terminal, your ultimate destination for all certifications. We are thrilled to have you here. Today, we're diving into another video of ISC Square's Cutting Edge Cybersecurity Certification Practice Exam Series. At Certification Terminal, we're committed to being your ultimate certification Q&A hub. We're here to support you on every step of your certification journey. If you find value in our content, don't forget to show your support. Hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share this video with anyone who could benefit from it. Now, let's get started on your path to becoming a certified cybersecurity pro. Question number one. How does the recovery time objective differ from the maximum tolerable downtime? Option A, and recovery time objective and maximum tolerable downtime are the same thing. Option B, and maximum tolerable downtime is the maximum amount of time that an organization can afford to be without a critical process or resource while in recovery time objective is the time it takes to recover from a disruption. Option C, and recovery time objective is the maximum amount of time that an organization can afford to be without a critical process or resource while in maximum tolerable downtime is the time it takes to recover from a disruption. Option D, none of the above. The correct answer is Option B, and maximum tolerable downtime is the maximum amount of time that an organization can afford to be without a critical process or resource while in recovery time objective is the time it takes to recover from a disruption. The recovery time objective and maximum tolerable downtime are both critical concepts in business continuity and disaster recovery planning. While they're related, they serve different purposes and have distinct implications for an organization's operational resilience. In practice, organizations use both recovery time objective and maximum tolerable downtime to formulate comprehensive disaster recovery plans. Recovery time objective assists in planning the recovery process, determining priorities, and allocating resources, while maximum tolerable downtime helps in setting realistic expectations and defining the boundaries within which the recovery efforts must operate to avoid significant repercussions. Both these metrics are crucial for ensuring effective business continuity and mitigating the impact of disruptions. Question number two. What specific component of a computer system does a side channel attack aim for? Option A, software vulnerabilities. Option B, physical components and indirect information leakage. Option C, network devices. Option D, user accounts and passwords. The correct answer is Option B, physical components and indirect information leakage. Side channel attacks are a crafty means of breaching security by exploiting the inadvertent information leakage from a system's physical components. These attacks don't directly target software vulnerabilities but rather capitalize on the unintended side effects of a system's operation, such as power consumption patterns, electromagnetic emissions, or timing discrepancies. Side channel attacks are particularly insidious because they don't rely on traditional software vulnerabilities. Instead, they take advantage of the physical properties of hardware or the environment in which a system operates. They can be challenging to defend against because they often exploit inherent properties of the system that are not easily controlled or mitigated. Addressing these vulnerabilities demands a holistic approach that combines hardware-level protections, software defenses, and ongoing research into new attack vectors and mitigation strategies. Question number three. What security principle highlights the protection of information and systems from unauthorized access and usage? Option A, confidentiality. Option B, security awareness. Option C, privacy. Option D, accountability. The correct answer is. Option A, confidentiality. Confidentiality focuses on restricting access to information to authorized individuals or entities. 
It ensures that sensitive data remains accessible only to those with proper authorization. Option B, security awareness is incorrect, security awareness pertains to educating individuals within an organization about potential security risks, best practices, and policies to ensure they understand and recognize security threats. Option C, privacy is incorrect, privacy involves the protection and control of personal or sensitive information. It ensures that individuals have the right to determine how their data is collected, used, disclosed, and stored. Option D, accountability is incorrect, accountability involves assigning responsibility for actions or decisions and the subsequent obligation to report, explain, or justify them. Question number 4. Which fire suppression system among the following utilizes a gas as the extinguishing agent? Option A, wet chemical. Option B, dry chemical. Option C, clean agent. Option D, foam. The correct answer is. Option C, clean agent. Clean agent systems use gases such as FM200, Novec1230, or CO2 that are non-conductive and leave no residue, making them suitable for protecting sensitive equipment like data centers. Option A, wet chemical is incorrect. Wet chemical systems utilize a potassium-based solution that reacts with cooking oils or fats to create a soapy layer, preventing reignition. Option B, dry chemical is incorrect. Dry chemical fire suppression systems use powdered chemicals, like sodium bicarbonate or potassium chloride, to put out fires. When discharged, these fine powders coat the fuel, interrupting the chemical reaction of the fire. Option D, foam is incorrect. Foam-based systems discharge a mixture of water and foam concentrate that forms a blanket over the fuel, cutting off the oxygen supply and suppressing the fire. Question number 5. Bob, a cybersecurity professional at a financial institution, oversees the implementation of controls aimed at safeguarding customer data and preventing unauthorized access. His primary focus revolves around establishing guidelines and practices to ensure that employees adhere to proper procedures and comply with security policies. What category of control is he primarily implementing? Option A, technical control. Option B, administrative control. Option C, physical control. Option D, operational control. The correct answer is. Option B, administrative control. When your emphasis is on setting up guidelines and practices to ensure employees adhere to proper procedures and security policies, your primary implementation involves administrative controls. These controls encompass the creation and execution of policies, procedures, standards, and guidelines governing security management within an organization. They specifically target human factors, management practices, and administrative procedures essential for supporting security objectives. In this scenario, your concentration on implementing measures to safeguard customer data and prevent unauthorized access aligns with the scope of administrative control. Option A, a technical control is incorrect. Technical controls involve employing technology-based mechanisms like firewalls, encryption, or intrusion detection systems to safeguard systems and data. While critical for information system security, these controls predominantly concentrate on implementing technological safeguards rather than guidelines and practices. Option C, physical control is incorrect. Physical controls encompass measures aimed at securing physical assets, such as access control systems, surveillance cameras, or locks. While crucial for comprehensive security, these controls primarily focus on physically safeguarding assets rather than establishing guidelines and practices for security management. Option D, operational control is incorrect. Operational control centers on day-to-day -day operational processes and procedures to continually ensure system and data security. This encompasses tasks like system monitoring, incident response, and change management. While vital for upholding security, operational controls differ from the broader guidelines and practices set by administrative control. Question number 6. If a node fails within a star network topology, 
how does it affect the remainder of the network? Option A, the entire network fails. Option B, the central node fails. Option C, half of the network fails. Option D, only the failed node is affected. The correct answer is. Option D, only the failed node is affected. Within a star network topology, every device connects to a central hub or switch. Should a single node encounter an issue, solely that node experiences the impact. The remainder of the network operates without disruption, given that each device maintains an individual link to the central hub or switch. This fault isolation capability stands as a key advantage of the star topology. Option A, the entire network fails is incorrect, this scenario is more characteristic of a bus topology, where all devices utilize a shared backbone. However, in a star topology, the failure of a single node doesn't result in a complete network failure. Option B, the central node fails is incorrect, if one node fails, it doesn't result in the failure of the central hub or switch, the central node. However, if the central hub or switch were to fail, it would indeed disrupt the entire network. Option C, half of the network fails is incorrect, it is highlighting the lack of impact on other nodes due to a failure, within a star topology holds true because of the isolated connections each node maintains with the central hub or switch. This design choice contributes to the stability and reliability of the network. Question number 7. What are the primary factors to consider when creating a disaster recovery strategy for a cloud-based system? Option A, ensuring data security and privacy. Option B, ensuring that the plan is cost-effective. Option C, ensuring that the plan is easy to implement. Option D, none of the above. The correct answer is. Option A, ensuring data security and privacy. Developing a robust disaster recovery plan for a cloud-based system involves a comprehensive approach that integrates technical solutions, personnel readiness, and strategic collaboration with cloud service providers. Prioritizing data security, critical system identification, regular testing, and continuous refinement are vital elements for ensuring the effectiveness of the plan. Implement robust encryption methods and access controls to protect sensitive data. Encryption ensures that even if data is compromised, it remains unreadable to unauthorized individuals. Identify and prioritize critical systems and applications essential for business operations. Understanding which components are most crucial enables a focused approach to recovery efforts. Question number 8. Which of these should be the main objective in the event of a disaster? Option A, guarantee the safety of people. Option B, application of disaster communication. Option C, protection of the production database. Option D, guarantee the continuity of critical systems. The correct answer is. Option A, guarantee the safety of people. While disaster recovery and business continuity are crucial for organizational resilience, they should never supersede the safety and well-being of individuals. Prioritizing human life in emergencies establishes a foundation for effective response, community support, and eventual recovery from the disaster's impact. Question number 9. What is the term used to describe the procedure of confirming a user's identity? Option A. Identification. Option B. Authentication. Option C, authorization. Option D, confidentiality. The correct answer is. Option B, authentication. Authentication is the process of confirming the identity of a user or entity. It verifies that the individual or system attempting access is indeed who or what it claims to be. Option A, identification is incorrect, Identification is the act of providing a username, account, or some form of recognition to signify a user or entity within a system. Option C. Authorization is incorrect. Authorization determines the access rights and permissions granted to authenticated users or entities within a system or network. Option D. 
Confidentiality is incorrect. Confidentiality refers to the protection of sensitive information from unauthorized access or disclosure. It ensures that data is accessible only to authorized individuals or systems. Question number 10. What is the main role of regulations and laws in governance procedures? Option A, to ensure legal compliance. Option B, to set standards for performance and behavior. Option C, to enforce policies and procedures. Option D, to provide guidelines for decision making. The correct answer is. Option A, to ensure legal compliance. Regulations and laws represent obligatory and enforceable guidelines that organizations must adhere to. They aim to ensure that businesses operate within legal boundaries, safeguarding both individual rights and the public interest. Non-compliance can lead to penalties and legal repercussions. These regulations are structured to ensure that organizations operate within the boundaries set by the country's laws, covering various aspects of conduct, operations, and interactions. Thank you for joining us today at Certification Terminal. We hope you found this video helpful on your journey towards becoming a certified cybersecurity expert. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in future videos, please let us know in the comments below. Your feedback is invaluable to us. Remember to hit that like button if you found this video informative, and don't forget to subscribe for more insightful content on certification exam preparations. Share this video with your colleagues and friends who might benefit from it. Together, we can build a strong community of certified professionals. Stay tuned for more updates, and until next time, keep learning and excelling in your certification endeavors. See you in the next video.